project I'm going to do here, um, um, getting organized to make a sink. But I know how hard it is to make a sink. Um, I could throw 25 pounds on the wheel and it's tough. Um, and as you get older, it gets tougher. Um, uh, but I wanted to try making a sink that uh, somebody who's a beginner could probably make. Um, and you still need a little bit of muscle, but I'm going to make a sink using a floppy bowl. Um, I decorated very much the same as I did with my floppy bowls that I made about a year ago. Uh, so you can watch that video, I'll put a link to it here in this video. Um, but we're going to do a sink from 25 pounds, of, well actually it's 22 pounds of plate because it's the 10 kilo boxes, um, uh, bags. And, um, and so that's a pretty big piece of plate, 10 kilos is 22 pounds. Um, and we're going to do it by hammering it. If you don't have a big round bat, and most studios, especially beginners, do not have a bat this big. This is a 21 inch, I think, maybe even 24 inch bat. Um, is just get yourself a wooden board, um, or even a table, um, that you can actually just put a piece of plastic over and, and you can hammer the clay on that. So all I've done is put myself a regular, irregular shape of plastic and I put it on top of the bat, which I'm then gonna turn over and I'm gonna duct tape this plastic to this bat. So now, it's fairly taut plastic over here, not too tight because I have to be able to get this off very quickly later on, um, but it's even so there's no wrinkles, that's the first thing, just make sure this plastic has no wrinkles because they will show up in the clay. Uh, and I'm going to place this, making sure the wheel is right in the center, I'm going to place a big ball of clay, this is just one bag of clay and I've simply patted it into a ball. Uh, and I'm going to place it right in the center there. So this is one whole bag of clay. And then, I'm just going to carefully I've watched some videos of African potters and this is how they start off some of those big coil pots. obviously will get tired. If you've got heavy duty wrists, I have fairly thick wrists, I can actually do this and it doesn't hurt me, but you might want to use a rubber mallet, that would help, because then you're going to have to start doing this. So if you hit this with a board of clay, be a lot easier on your hands. Middle is the thickness that I needed because you remember you've got to get a drain in here, so you want to leave that middle an inch thick. Um, it's, you know, the drain itself will have a little hollow area which sits into and you don't want to leave it so thin that you only have like a quarter inch or something uh, for the actual drain to fit on. Um, so um, otherwise when they plummet tight yourself you can crack the sink. So I've actually stopped doing this area now and I'm going to work on the outside edge. And I've been using a mallet that actually helped because it does, it's a lot of pounding on your wrist. But you can actually... Now, if you want to, at some point you can use a rolling pin.
Okay, the rolling pin is a nice finishing way of doing this because we want it to be thick in the center where the drain's going to be. And the edge shouldn't be too thin either. So I've got it so that I'm wedging my body to stop it rotating as I'm doing this. And I want to get it just the size of this bat. So if you're not using the bat, just the... I've got a lazy Sue's under here from the dollar store. Because the, the metal potter's wheel was actually letting it fall off a little bit. So I just want to get this to the outer edge of the back. Okay, so I've spent a lot of time here <coughs> stretching the clay. So what I'm doing here is using just a little bit of sponge. I'm compressing the edge a little bit. <coughs> That's why I wanted to take it just to the edge. I can do this after it's slumped over the mold too, but I can, I'm just going to do a little bit now. And you, this is a piece you're going to have to make dry under controlled situation. You don't want it to dry too fast. And making sure there's no marks, although that's not a big deal because I'm going to texture it in a minute. Okay, I'm going to stamp now this whole thing with the texture which will appear on the inside of the mold of the actual sink. And I've got a bunch of fish. Another one here. So we're going to have a lot of fish, and then I'm going to have my roller stamps that have like flowers and leaves that will actually go up the side. And then of course the sky will be there. So it'll be a pond with a garden around in the sky when it's finished. So what I've done uh, is actually stamp it so fish looks almost like fossils in the center there. And then I've put my flower stamps all the way around. I had some with leaves, some with flowers, and then I had some regular flowers and some leaves right at the very outer edge. Uh, now it's very textural, which for a sink is not a great thing because you've got to clean the sink, remember. So I will have to, as this dries, go over it and rub it and I'll probably have to glaze it fairly thickly too so that it actually doesn't have a really deep texture. Um, but we'll come to that later. This is left because that's where the drain will go and I'm hoping when I flip it upside down I'll get the drain right there. 
Okay, that's what it looks like. So you get a nice close up there. I am now going to put a large piece of plastic across the whole thing. And I have this great big plastic type sink piece that um, I was given years ago. And if you don't have anything like this, which is unlikely you do, you can make one of these, or have a friend who can throw on the wheel make you one. Because um, I have several that I've, had, that I've made uh, in the studio for my students to use. Um, and, you know, but if you can make one that's exactly the size you need, that's even better. I measured with a tape rule, cross, and made a point in the center where I've placed the ball right on so I know it's right in the center. And now I'm going to flip it upside down uh, onto this bowl, and I have a little pop, a little banding wheel set ready uh, to put this down on the top of it, and I have a big paint can on top of that. That's what I got ready to turn it upside down on, so that the the, the actual edges will not drag onto the table. I wanted to lift it really high. So now I'm going to flip it. Got it fairly level, I think. And now I can undo the plastic. I can take the board off. It's holding its shape quite well because of the piece of plastic that it was on, but I have to peel that off now. The underside of plastic will stay. Now we should see some flopping. And then just like you saw in my other video, when if you've watched the other one anyway, is we need to actually make some folds. Carefully, it's a good idea to Use a sponge so that you don't create any marks too much. I'm using a sponge between my fingers and the actual. Clay. This is a lot thicker than the one I did in the other video. So it's not quite as floppy, but it is going to be forced into being floppy. We don't want it to be thin at the edge because somebody could drop something in it. And remember you could use toilet rolls to actually create these flop kind of things, you could just push a piece of paper or a toilet roll in there. So we've got a pretty big sink here with a great bunch of flops on it. So now I'm just going to be doing the sponging to kind of get it a bit nicer. Okay, the only thing I've been doing is smoothing it. kind of get rid of any
box for my hands. I did use a metal scraper on, on the top here to get rid of any imprints from the plastic or the mold or the table or whatever. And then it's important to go around your bottom edge and make sure you've got no open cracks appearing. We left this very thick, there won't be any open cracks. But on smaller pieces, when I've used thinner clay, you often get this, the edge splitting a little bit. And you can actually just deliberately fold out a little bit more at this point as well if you want to. But this is a thing, I want people to be able to get baby neck. So. Nice smoothing pressure. And that's it. Now we're going to leave it for 24 hours probably. Um, I got my heat going so um, it should dry out. Um, I'll check it tonight, but I bet it'll be tomorrow. So please don't hang around. You can go get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. This is how I left it overnight. Um, and I have my overhead heaters on this time of the year, so I've got air blowing around that's kind of hot, well warm, <laughs> 65 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature set in here in the winter. Um, so um, it's actually been sitting and it's still soft on the top. Um, I touched it and I can still easily make a little dent there, so the clay is quite soft, too soft to turn it the right way up. So we're looking at another 12 hours of it sitting like this before I think I can turn it upside down. It's uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon, so it's been drying out another six hours and I've touched it and it's firming up a little bit. I think I can probably turn it over now and that's going to be a big thing because it's quite heavy. So let's see. A sink has to be heavy, so... Oh. It's holding. So I think what I should do is support it in a few places so it doesn't sag too much. It would be nice if it's flared out quite a bit, um, but we don't want it to flatten itself with the weight because this is heavy. The, the plastic around the rim is so it dried more evenly. There you go, I'll let you have a look at it here. We've got some little touch-up stuff to do to it. But it's holding up quite well. But it's very heavy, so I just need to put some weights underneath areas like this to sort of make sure it doesn't sag too much more. And there's the inside. We'll uh, clean it up, sponge it a little bit. We have a hole to put in yet, and that'll be it. Okay, the sink is actually e easily just past leather hard now, so I have to put a hole in the middle. And that's a little tricky when you've got something uh, that's uh, as off-centered as this. Let's see what it looks like when it spins. I've put it on a chuck so I can go through, but I, uh, I've got to get my hand in there and be steady without uh, moving it. So it's a little tricky to do something like this, but you just got to go for it. I've got a drain that's one and three quarter inches in size. So I'm going to try to make it fit that. And I'll have to put a little bevel area in the center too. But there's nothing to rest my arms on, so I've just got to be firm.
I did. So you can have it big or you can have it small, it doesn't really matter. So it's better big than too small. So the feel of that. It's kind of enough, I think, at this point, because it's not a very thick piece of metal they, they supply these with. But like once again, I want to make sure that it can fit in there. to make this one, I want to make a mistake on this one, so I think that's enough. Because I don't usually put glaze in that whole area either. So I think we got it. And that's it, now it just has to dry. It's been drying for, this is the fourth day that I've been doing this piece. So I started it, um, when I started, I think Monday was New Year's Day, so we didn't really I think I did it on the Tuesday. Make sure there's no sharp point there. Just rub that off with my fingernail. Same underneath. Okay. Let's hope it dries without any cracks. There is a potential with anything when you do a sink that you'll get a crack coming out from the drain like that. Um, if the uh, shrinkage still has a lot to do, I think this one's got very little shrinkage to go, but the dry is actually it, the, the rim is actually dry and there's still some moisture in the bottom down here in this area here where it's really thick because this is quite thick which is what I was hoping for. It's time to glaze. Um, this is a big piece um, so the best thing you can do when you're, when you're glazing something like this um, is stamping with sponges. Um, pouring is a little dif difficult um, but I'm going to have to pour the back, you know, the underside, um, but stamping with a sponge is the best way because you can kind of gra gradually even those areas out when you're doing it with a sponge. Um, but first I'm going to pour it, so let me show you how I do that. It's as big as the bucket, so I can't dip it. And this is my big bucket. This is a 25 gallon bucket. So, um, so I'm going to pour it. I got my little yogurt carton. I'm going to hold it upside down. And it weighs 20 pounds probably. I don't know how much since uh, it's lost its water weight. Oh, maybe not that, but it's still a giant. Without damaging it. But I don't have to be too careful because this is the underside. My arm's already tired. I'm just hoping I don't get any missed areas. I have no idea if you can see this. My shoulder might be in the way. Whew. My little finger is really hurting. Okay, so we've got a glaze coat all over the back. Oh. Let's see if I can get it right way up. Oh, it's heavy. So it didn't get any on the inside, which is what I was hoping. So I've got a little wheel now, and I'm going to sit it on the wheel. Uh, the outside is pretty dry. The edge is a little wet on the rim, and the top edge is going to be blue anyway. And the bottom is going to be blue too, mixed in with a little um, blue, green, copper, red probably there. And uh, then the centers, I'm going to use my greens and my yellows. So I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I'm starting off with uh, blue, green, copper, red and turquoise. Uh, sorry, blue, green, copper, red, which is a sort of turquoise color and dark, my regular bright blue. So I'm just going to stamp. using the blue, green, copper, red first. And when you're stamping, you're sucking the glaze back up into the sponge so you 
need to kind of go around a couple of times minimally. Sometimes I go around three, so let's go ahead and do that. So that'll give it a little glow in the center, I think. Um, it's supposed to represent a little pool of water in the middle. And now we've got the dark blue, which I don't need to go very high up because the plants start. There's some fish in there, remember? The blue tends to go a little greenish sometimes. So I'm doing two coats, and this is white clay. And let's go around a couple of times there as well. So that's like two and a half. Now let's go for the three. And I'm just going to touch, I'm not going to touch too much there, but just trying to even up that little edge. The glaze will run anyway, so. Okay, so that's the blue at the bottom. Um, so we're going to have a sort of turquoise overlapping, a little bit of the blue over the top. Um, and then I'm going to start the green, which will come in there. Uh, we're going to try and get it a bit darker at this edge, right at the top. Because the fish are right there. Lovely. Now, the blue's overlapping the rim already. But I'm going to, without running, because remember this press too hard with this hard with the sponge and you'll get some runs. So I'm just going around the piece like this. Okay, now I've got matte turquoise, apple green, and my yellow oatmeal. Um, so I'm going to uh, dab, I think, um, I'm going to do some, yeah, I don't know which one to start, yellow, yeah, I've drunk the yellow oatmeal, that's probably the lighter of the colors. Um, wherever the flowers are, I think I'll just do a golden rim, a, a ring. Now we're moving to the green, the regular apple green. And I can do a little bit of that, I think, going into the, I'm going the wrong way again, I want you to be able to see. Because it looks a bit stripy, I will go over some other colours and break up that feeling of stripiness in a little while. The matte turquoise settles out a little bit.
So if you get what I'm saying now, this was a monster to glaze, but I'm, my arm's aching holding the sponge up like this. I should have done it on a table, but, um, but basically I'm, a, I'm able to glaze a large piece just with a sponge and a few pots of colors. Um, so let's see, I'm going to go into the green now with some of this yellow to kind of break up the green layer, but not pressing hard. I think we're done. Hopefully it's going to look great when it comes out of the kiln. I'm not going to say ooh yet, because I'm looking to see if there is a crack. Oh my god, there's no crack. Let's ting it. Nice ting, there's no crack. Ooh, okay, so um, I ended up with more of a stripiness than I was hoping for, because I did blend a little bit. But still, I got some really nice um, effect. Uh, well, it looks good. Um, and the, the textures are showing through, but not too nasty. Yep, it's smooth. There's no sharpness. Yeah, no, I think it came out pretty good. Okay, this is a sink a beginner potter who can't throw on a wheel can make. You know, so uh, it's just a bag of clay, you know, pummeled as you saw in the beginning of the video. Um, using your hand or a wooden um, piece of 2 by 4 or something would work as well. Um, and you just have to do it evenly, rotating it slowly. If you, if you watch videos of African potters doing their large coiled pieces, uh, the way they start the bottoms, it's exactly the same as the way those African potters start the bottom of their big pieces. Um, and um, it's a good idea um, if you have one of those big dome um, uh, molds that I used, which mine was made out of plastic. I don't know where that came from. I inherited it from somebody. But if you know a potter who can throw you a nice large bowl on the wheel and you can't throw, uh, then get them to throw you one. You could ask them to make you that mold and that would make it a lot easier. And if you can't find one of those, go to a hardware store and see if you can find something there that has that large curve to it. But, um, but it looks good. Now I'm going to lift it and hope it didn't run onto the kiln shelf. No, nope, it came up. A little bit of backwash stuck there. So I'm going to have to sand that off. But it looks good. You know, you can see I should have maybe evened that up, but that won't be seen on the underside of the sink. And it could be sunk slightly into a counter anyway. But see, when you're sitting it down, let's see, that's level, and you don't, I might move my arm, if that's level, you don't see it. So that's good. Oh, it's heavy. It's supposed to be. And I had a couple of lids here, which look terrific if the, um, these are from teapots. I don't think they're in this kiln. I think they're in the other kiln. But there's a couple of lids. Tenmaku gold. That's better. It's in focus now. Tenmaku gold, variegated blue, and oatmeal. And let's see whether the sink, the teapots are in here or not. Mostly it's mugs, I think. Yep, mostly mugs in this kiln. So the teapots will be in. Um, the other kiln, this is the new mugs I'm doing for the barn in Mahon Bay uh, in the matte black and my gloss black which is licorice over the top of the matte black so it goes satin that's very nice and a little bit glossy on the rim there but those are new for the barn I'll try a new one for this year and the rest are for the bakery we've seen all of these before uh, different glaze combos, so I, can't, I don't need to go over these, but um, just a variety of the colors, which are, you'll see in my, my videos. So, in the sake of letting you get back to what you're doing, I'll skip over these. I do want to show you this piece. 
It's uh, Tenmaku Gold um, over my white 516 clay, and it turned out really beautiful. And I see this sort of mattish Tenmaku on the left, and the honey on the right where it's a little thinner. Um, uh, but I just thought that turned out really nice. It's a base for a butter dish, and all that, but um, very sweet.